What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell with the Jay Campbell Podcast. I have to get used to saying that. And I'm very, very excited today to be joined in my virtual Zoom studio with two of the most amazing people that I know, Dr. Daniel Stickler and Dr. Micra, Micra Hamilton. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Doing great. So they are very similar. Let me just say this real quick. So they are very similar to me and my wife. Um, they are absolutely cosmically connected, cosmically consciously connected, both leading visionary people in what I would call the performance and health optimization space. Uh, Micker's bio is insane. Uh, 30 years in the United States Air Force as a system strategist and human performance subject matter expert, uh, leveraging her experience. She works with complex systems. I mean, honestly, I'm not going to, I want to get into the meat and potatoes. I mean, both of you guys are amazing. Dr. Stickler has been on my podcast a number, number of times now, I think like three times. We've done all sorts of stuff. I just came back from their um, Appear on Zoe conference in the beginning before the world unraveled on us. Uh, last early, week. Before yeah, the last there. week, literally in March, which was phenomenal. As I told you guys, it was the best conference that I've ever been to from a medical standpoint. And it really wasn't even medical. It was alternative, spiritual, holistic, functional. There was everything there. Um, and it was amazing. And obviously, I haven't had a chance to connect with you. I know, Dan, you and I did something since then. Um, but honestly, it's a blessing to have both of you guys here. Before we get into what we're going to talk about, um, you know, just tell a little bit, especially, Mikra, about your background and how you and Dan came to become the, the powerful synergistic force that you guys are. Well, okay. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, you know, my background is, is interesting because most of my life, 30 years, I spent in the Air Force in service. And I, I did that because I, I felt like uh, it's, a, it's a good thing to do, right, to serve others. And I knew I could die for anyone for any reason, right? I can always step out there for people. But additionally, I knew that I was limitless. And it's, and it's kind of funny because people go, what does that even mean? What I mean by that is we believe that we're limited in nature, that we're small one-time use, you know, carbon vehicles that we don't know where we go after we die. And, and I didn't ever believe any of that. Um, and so the military allowed me to be with adventurous people who were all in like me and to also uh, push to the ledge and mostly over the ledge of performance. What is the human capable of when our belief systems and our limitations are not in the way? And so that's been, my life has been really dedicated to performance and I will say purposeful evolution of the human system in an integrated way, right? What are we when we're all one system, not parts and pieces of body, mind, and spirit? Right. And so when when I met, I, I call him my twin, when I met him, it was the first time I'd ever felt energy. And we were very, very far away. I felt this wall and I'm like, what is that? And I look over and I'm I'm directly beamed to him. And I said, Oh, who's that? Right. And so we uh, we developed a friendship and I said to him, you know, we would change the world together. Uh, and, and we were compelled to be together. There was not an opportunity for us not to be together. So we said yes, and we've been together almost every minute since. He even went, did all my military stuff with me, <laughs> stayed as the spouse in the, in the general's quarters. But, That's awesome. <laughs> um, right. But, but it, it was such a, what we call a sacred union. Yeah. And, and it's been so stunning. Uh, so that's my my adventure of meeting him and um we're years and years down that lane and it continues to get more and more uh sacred more and more cosmic in and, and you know we wouldn't think that's possible and yet it does <laughs> so how long have you guys actually been together now in time 
2007. Yeah. yeah, 2007 we met. Years. And mm -hmm. yeah. And you guys were both coming out of previous marriages is that how it worked we were we were actually in in marriages and you know we have five boys i have three right. and dad has two they're exactly the same age they're they're best friends they were all on the same teams and you know uh, we both we both had uh what we would call good relationships we really loved and friended our former spouses sure sure uh, but when we met and the worlds truly collided there was no question um, that that process was absolutely, and I'm going to use the word destined because there's no other way to look at it sure, than that. Sure. Well, and I, you know, looking at looking at it from my perspective, that it was it was it was something that was almost beyond our control. But it, it's it's kind of like in quantum entanglement. You know, you have these paired particles that that spin together, and once you encounter that that other half of you <laughs> you're just you are just so compelled to to dispense with everything and make that happen that's so beautiful i mean i won't get i won't share but obviously we share very similar stories you know monica and i have been together about eight years and i was not where i needed to be but both of us were already coming out of our divorce actually monica wasn't officially divorced at that time but she was living separate uh, but very similar things. And, you know, that's so awesome. And, and that's what, you know, when, when we were together with both of you guys um, this last time, you know, we could see that energy when you guys were up on stage close to each other and then just, you know, the way you carry yourself. And again, Monica and I are the same way. Uh, mm -hmm. But anyway, it's a blessing and I'm honored to know both of you guys. And I really want to get into the points because you're both just such deep thinkers. And, you know, the people that I bring on this podcast now are really not just about, you know, human performance optimization, which you guys are amazing at. It's more about the whole energy of this new earth, right? Like I, I call myself now on all my social media, a new earth architect nice, because that's what I'm creating. Right. And, and, and bringing people like you guys on the show who are very similar, if not the exact same, um, is the whole goal of manifesting that. Right. So yes. let's talk about that. So the first point and, and with you guys, I could talk for 24 hours straight, but what the first point is new thinking on human health. And, and Mick, I really want you to expand on that because you were talking about that at Zoy, but you didn't really get a chance to go deep because you guys had so many amazing speakers. And, and Oh, by the way, I did a podcast so far with Amy. And she completely melted my brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She lowered like, just my energy just in our communication like she is a true master she is she is a master but anyway um expound upon that new thinking in human health well you know as i as i mentioned earlier uh we we are not limited now you, you can't know that you're not limited until you actually have the experience of it right so we can intellectualize and we can talk about it all day uh, so, so I'll move off the limited nature of us and, and just simply go to what if we looked toward, toward and all of our actions that we took were toward thriving and flourishing, not being healthy, not having high well-being. Those are all great things. Those are baseline human. We're a, a spectacular intelligent design. And so if, if we function in that window of homeostasis that we're designed to be ideal in, we don't get sick, we don't get tired, we don't get grumpy or depressed or burned out or any of those things. So if we just said, this is the foundation, then now where can we go from that beautiful foundation? Now we can be optimized and we can enhance our systems, which is a very different discussion. So the new health, we, we call it a, a new global um, complex precision design. And so the entire planet has the opportunity to thrive and flourish. And so we say, well, what will it take? When you look at the healthcare system, it's sick care or treatment care, reduction, uh, stove pipe, siloed thinking. If we take our, our multidimensional thinking and we go, what is it gonna take for for my system to go there because I don't want to be away from sick. I don't want to prevent sick. I don't need to be sick at all. And I'm going to thrive and flourish. What does that take for me? And now I'm unique. I'm not like you. You and I aren't going to do the same things to thrive and flourish. 
right? I'm going to design mine based on my precision information, my data that's unique to me. Right. And so that's, and we already have the opportunity for that. That's available now. And as, as the whole sick care healthcare system switches to it, we'll very quickly move to that state. Return on investment is insane. Right. Happy, healthy people creating, innovating, loving each other. <laughs> right. It's like a, it's like a win, win, win. Dad, how far are we away from that? We're there. We're, we're I mean, there. I mean, truly, uh, and that's, you know, that's what we work with in our, in our medical clinic is we, we work with people that understand and, and live that mindset. Right. You know, the, the people that are out there that are, they're saying, you know, I, I know there's always places that I can be better, be enhanced, um, live a better experience. How can I get there? And that's what we work with. And it's, it's available now. It's not, it's not currently mainstream type medicine, but sure. you know, it, it, there's just not many people doing this. I mean, they're, right. you know, the human system is complex and you've heard me talk about this before. It's not a linear system. We're not, we're not robots. We're not computers. We are a dynamic system and everyone is an individual and everyone is contextualized into their individual states. So you can't, you can't generalize things like diet or exercise plans or, you know, conscious growth, you know, these all have to be taken to the individual level under the individual's context. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Like I have so many thoughts about what you just said, but I do want you to both comment because yes, it's there for a very select small group of people. Is it ever going to be there for everyone or is it always going to just get to be a further bifurcation where those who, you know, understand what we're talking about here, this multidimensional phased, you know, conceptuality versus the people who just are the drones who just say, you know, whatever, you know, is, my $40 copay, the $30 copay affords me. I mean, I, I know it's an opinion question. Who, who wants to answer it? I'll start because we, we generally both answer because we've got such interesting lenses. But, you know, um, the answer is yes, we will get there. Will it take us four generations? Potentially. It might be sooner. Given, given what we actually are, it could be very soon. It can right. turn on rate a dime. Um, realistically, where we are right now, and especially given everything that we've uh, seen through the COVID experience, it, it now is the perfect time to right. instill it in new system, not, not changed or different system, new system. And, you know, yes, it's going to go to everyone on the planet. Now, Dan and I are working on a it's, a, it's actually a manifesto, and I, he may have mentioned this to you before, but it's on a global system toward thriving and flourishing, toward purposeful human evolution. And what that means is every single person gets to have the precision of them. Now, you know that we're going to have to raise the consciousness. In Africa, you know, they're, they're a bit different yeah. than Asia and here. Right. So so it's a multi pronged approach across the globe with partnerships between private industry and governing leaders who understand that we've got to make mass change. But right. it isn't change. Right. We've got to build a new system that's precise. We've got all the tech. We've got all the money. We've got all the brain power. Uh, we actually have motivation and inspiration for it. Right. They're, they're, the model, though, now is we're putting it in writing, and we're going on a big campaign across the globe. We're actually going to step out of, of what we've been creating into a global campaign where forward thinkers who recognize that we have control can actually implement it for themselves, their corporations, their organizations, their countries, right? We intend to be the healthcare paradigm, the, the thriving and flourishing paradigm of the planet. That includes the US DOD. And we know that we can do it for a fraction of the cost that's being paid right now. We could save truly a trillion dollars right now today if yeah. 
the actions were taken. And we also know that it's going to take a tiny bit of time because you got to have a pilot. Right. You got to have enough data to go, hey, look, this absolutely works. We can also right, provide that. Sure. And so, so coming in the next two years for sure. Now, planetary wide to reach, we, we have a, a vision, reach 1 billion people by 2025 to meet that number. And we're going to meet it. To meet that number, that's a field force of people who are trained, um, medical schools doing it, you know, corporations doing it, big, big numbers. Community yeah. centers. Community centers. I mean, we, we want to pull this into each community so that we're taking care of our own people. And we're also giving resources to take care of those who can't take care of their people. Because that's happening. So one billion would be, if we... <laughs> If we believe what we're told about census data and, and understanding the scale of actual the size of the population of the world, you guys would be talking about, you know, truthfully about 15% of people right. reaching planetary consciousness, which according to, you know, this guy, and it, you know, it's funny, I've, I've, I've read so much of, I've read all of it a million times, but it's like, even his greatest disciples said that they wish that he would not have quantified it, that the numbers it's you know, what we throw, do, throw right? people off. But I mean, you do have to have some sort of line in the sand, but just opinion question before we go to the next thing, where are we right now as a species with being it, the percentage of people over the line of integrity in your guys' opinion? I mean, are we over 10% or is it? Are, you, are you asking above 200? Yeah, exactly. On that the, scale. the line of integrity. That's what I call it. Yeah. What do you, you know, guys I, think? I, I can tell you, nobody knows. Yeah. And yet, I, I believe that many of us perceive that that number uh, is higher than 200, right? Like the mm -hmm. average is higher right. than 200, and it's jumping very quickly. Yeah. I'm, I tend I to- I agree with that, by the way. I tend to be more on that there are many more of us out there than have ever been like recorded, and right. every day, right, our awareness is popping open. Right. In staggering numbers we watch it all around us and well it's, you, you, so, COVID's pushing it. so i agree i didn't mean to cut you off but like the the issue that we have you know to to to, to make that not look as clear as what you're saying because i feel that um is that the mainstream media you know this the control of what they flash in front of us is usually not of the consciousness level that you're talking about so it's kind of hard for people that aren't you know, really with it, multidimensional in their aspects of thinking um, to truly understand that. Um, I, I, well, then, again, my opinion. Yeah, Go ahead, Daniel. One of the, one of the aspects of that chart that, that I've always struggled with um, or saw as a challenge with it is it, it almost is a rating system of consciousness right. saying right. this is better than that. Um, now, in the book that we talked about before we went live with uh, the Finders, Finders by Jeffrey yeah. Martin, he talks about the different levels, but there's no valuation on the levels of, right. of how you move in that. And, and I really like that approach and it is a choice for people. I mean, you know, is it our responsibility to elevate consciousness in others? No, it's our responsibility to show them exactly. and let them make that choice. Though. Leadership. Right. Exactly. And, and what's coming, what's interesting, Jay, is there is some really amazing work in the AI lane on this very topic. And they're, they're getting a 70 to 80% um, confidence rate in being able to have someone do very specific things with their language to, to find not just an overall level of consciousness, but a signature of consciousness. Sure, right? sure. Because because you're conscious or highly conscious in one area and in another area, you got some things that trigger you and right. And so um, I would say in the next year, we're going to have a way that is, is not a biased way. It's not a muscle testing thing. It's great. Right, it's, it's truly a, more of a neutral way of looking right. at consciousness that I think will change the, uh, the conversation about it because I think it's, I think it's polarized I agree because of the very way the scale is done. Yeah. And, and truthfully, I agree with Dan. I mean, this is just, you know, an arbitrary tangible measurement for, you it's know, hard. people to have some idea. Cause again, you know, when I, I the, the average people, okay. I don't talk to guys like you every day between, you know, my life and some of the people in my inner circle, thank God for my WhatsApp groups. 
Um, you know, I, I don't have the conversations that we're having with today. So it's, for me, it's just kind of like, like I said, kind of an arbitrary, what is that? You know, and then you can point them, you know, to that idea. But I agree with you, Daniel. There's so many levels. It's like intelligence, you know, there's emotional, there's so many just various forms of like what a person is or how a person is quantified that you really can't just like lump them in a color coded, you know, graph or anything. Um, the fallacy of actually reading, I was reading a quote this morning uh, from Jamie Wheel. Um, he, had, he had sent me a slide deck on something. And in that, and I don't know if this is his quote or it was something um, that he had taken, but it was, you know, no one can be 100% enlightened just as no one can be 100% educated. I mean, it's a, it's a journey. Right. And, right. and to think that we have these endpoints and, and these landmarks, I, I just don't agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was something I was going to pull up and I was going to read to you guys from this questions and answers from Russell um, about, cause they asked him, they're like, how do you, uh, how do you know all the things that you know? And he talks about it, but I, I want to answer it. So the, one of our points, I'll find it when we're, when you guys are answering, but, um, root cause, you know, and then really just the whole limited thinking on human potential. Cause again, you were, Michael, you were talking about that at, at Zoy. <laughs> yeah, and you. I, I hate the term root cause. <laughs> it's it's such bullshit. I like, I, it. I like it. Everybody, everybody in the functional <laughs> medicine industry wants to use this root cause. Okay, go ahead. One, complex systems don't have root causes. I mean, it, it just doesn't exist. And there's no doubt that our system is defined as a complex system. Right. There are multiple agents that create <laughs> outcomes based on interactions with each other and feedback loops. Right. So to to get to the root cause of something is such a, uh, a lie in medicine. Right. And right. we need to completely step away from that and <laughs> start focusing on the fact that we are complex and that a, a trait that we have is not linear. It is not, if you have A, it equals B. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah. And this is one of the things that we're trying to get through in our manifesto is really addressing the fact that you know, this, all this, the, these concepts that we have around health and wellness and medicine are based on incorrect premise, premises, premises, premises. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he got so fired up. He couldn't remember his words <laughs> or, or he just Don King us and made one up. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> you, you go back Jay and, and redirect him on that question. <laughs> Um, no, but it's true. I mean, I a hundred percent agreement. And again, you know, we're, we're so outside of that construct with us three talking. Um, it's scary to think that there's so many people that are in medicine that still, you know, isolate their thinking and their conscious stream, you know, based on those two words, which is absolutely retarded. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's scary. I mean, like you guys said, we're very complex and you have to understand, um, that, nothing is, you know, one piece. I mean, again, it's even going back to this, that you can't just like abstractly quantify a person based on, you know, that thought process. Um, so on human potential, limited thinking on human potential, micro, talk about that. That's you. <laughs> this is, this is where most people go, okay, she's just crazy. And, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Right. Cause, cause and I love her for it. Cause the world I was gonna say, I, you can't be on my podcast if you're not somewhat crazy. It's impossible. So. <laughs> well, you know, the world I live in is limitless. Right. And it's, as I said, I have a direct experience of that. And that's, what's so cool is that, that I don't have to wonder whether what I believe is true or not true. I don't spend energy, uh, I say inefficiently, because I'm not concerned about what anybody else thinks about me, the way I stand up, the way I, I don't have any of those right. things in the way anymore, right? right? right. And so when, when I look at the capacity for our limitless nature, what is our human potential? Mm -hmm. You know, I always say it is limitless. What would you like it to be? What do I want to experience here? Because I'm creating it, every single solitary piece of it. And so, you know, I always look at what is required for all of us to move in that direction. Mm -hmm. And it's sovereign responsibility. Right. So if I take that sovereign responsibility, I know that I'm creating it. I can push a thought and that thought equals an outcome almost instantly. 
And so you get good, really good over time at recognizing how powerful you are, how powerful we all are, because all of our actions equal an outcome. And when you get good at the energy, you go, ooh, that was not quite the outcome that I thought I was creating, right? Mm -hmm. And you're not thinking while you're doing this. So even that statement from me is not accurate, right? But it's, it's so interesting when we go, okay, number one, accept sovereign responsibility. While I may not totally believe that, like I'm, I'm talking to everybody, mm-hmm. while I might not totally believe that, if I can just say, I know I'm sovereignly responsible, this action equals this outcome, and start right there. Also, the question mark of what if everything I thought to be true might not be true in that way that I thought I knew it to be? The question mark opens the door for right. synchronicity, for right. magic, for whatever your, your um, language is, a door to a limitless expression, because just think of one choice and all of the, the shoots that come off that one choice. Right. One split second can ruin a life. One split second can create the life of your dreams, right? And so it's, um, it's interesting you got to take the first step by being sovereignly responsible to get to the limitless nature. And then you draw to you, really you create, it's not drawing it to you, but you create the next yeah. step for you. And then that next step leads to another one. And then it's the mystery of life revealed. Right. right? So stunning. And there is no limit to it. Uh, so you do, but you, what you just said, you, you do create it through the law of resonance. Like you said, like it's that fixation or that focused intent upon that, which you want. And, you know, just back to what you said, you know, you know, I, I always say become um, sovereign and empowered. You're saying the same thing really. Yes. Yes. And I I love the empowered part on top of it because mm -hmm. it's authentic power that we actually use to create through. Right. Or <laughs> to create an, a, a limitless expression. <laughs> but, 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 you, but, you, but you are right in what we were saying off the show, you know, like about my audience and whatnot, you know, like, and, and really the audience of the world due to social media, in my opinion, um, the, 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 the victim, you know, the victim consciousness, this victim, I call it victim savior consciousness, because when you have a victim consciousness, at some point you pull yourself up by the bootstraps and your savior is going to save you. Of course. <laughs> and, that, and that's what they that's what they've created when I say they, you know, mainstream All of whoever us. they are. But that's you know, the, it's always about the celebrities or somebody that, you know, you can aspire to be. Maybe it'll be a pro athlete or a musician or something. And it's just like people get caught up in the idea that they don't have power. And they're not, you know, sovereign in their capabilities and stuff. And it's funny because something that you said really it moved me because I don't even know how you cannot be. And again, I, I'm not speaking arrogantly or condescendingly, but I don't know how you can't not take accountability for your actions. Like, I, like it's I seemingly like people understand sovereignty though. In no, that, in that yeah. sense, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not a common, uh, common feeling or a common uh, cognitive process for people, right. uh, especially when we're in a society that has basically co-opted all of the uh, the sovereignty of the individual i mean it's you know from healthcare to financial um and and work related stuff i I I mean the last three months yeah but you know he's he's not saying co-opted in a way of they're doing something to us conspiracy no right of course Right. The, what we create is based on where we send our consciousness, right. where we send our focus right. and awareness and attention. Choice. And so if I'm going to send my focus to CNN and Fox and, and, and all of that stuff that, that I know isn't giving me the, the ideal information, the truth, I, I don't like using that word because people don't even know what truth means. But if, if that's where I'm sending my consciousness, that's where I'm getting my news. That's what's informing my creation. So right. I don't send it there. It makes no sense, right? right? That's the thing. And it's, and it's each sovereign individual's responsibility to choose where they send the consciousness. Just as an example though, Jay, like, like eating meals. I mean, you know, 
when we were in, in ancestral times, prehistorically, you, you would eat when you were hungry or when food became available. And we've gotten to the point now where we eat based on the time of day. We've, we've lost that sovereign <laughs> nature of ourselves because of the societal values that have been ingrained in us. I mean, you know, this is one of the things we teach with, with wearables when we work with our clients is we teach them to relearn interoception, understanding the, the signals from the body and interpreting the way that you need to take action with. Yeah. Yeah. Something, something you said, um, Mike, Mike, the, 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 the idea that, and I say this a lot, the, the idea that you, when you're consuming content, television, whatever, you're, you're, you're of this world. And that's what the goal of the, whoever is running the planet, you know, so that you're just a constant consumer versus when you're a creator, and you're in that conscious stream of source energy, you are in this world. And so I'm always telling people like, you wanna be in this world as much as possible because then nothing can really stop you from having that life that you ultimately wanna attain. And obviously, as you said earlier in the show, you know, everybody has different wants, uniques, um, needs, whatever, but like, as long as every day I wake up and I am not being influenced by anything other than what my creative you know, what I call cosmic conscious energy stream is that my life is amazing. But it's as soon as I sit down or slow down and not create and I consume that, you know, I start getting a variation and, and then it, you can get pulled off as I, so to speak, or I, so to say, but it's, it's interesting. Like I, if, if people would focus on creating most of the time, and obviously I know that you have to rest and that you have to adapt and whatnot and stuff like that, but too many people are focused on consumption versus creation and and it's simply presence exactly. right? it's awareness and it's presence how aware am i of my environment of my external environment my internal environment which are one and the same right and yet it's not until you actually experience it so awareness then focus and in and it, intention is a tiny piece of it but focus of where am I pointing my consciousness because I'm the only one who can point it nobody can pull my consciousness unless I allow it and so it's that's back to that sovereign responsibility I am responsible for where I point my consciousness and where I point it to equals am I mindlessly consuming because we're we're such consumers what am I consuming there's a big difference between me serial binge watching TV, even though there's nothing wrong with that, and being out in nature, right. connected to the source of my life, which is this planet, yes. right? Big difference between those two places. But it is, as you said, it's, it's interesting because it's very subtle, it's very pulling. I, I like to say you, you get kind of pulled into the weeds or into the mud, and right. then you, you have, I call it spiritual narcolepsy, right? right. You, you fall asleep and then you realize, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? This isn't where I prefer to be. Yeah. And then, right, I go back to my home, my centered place, and I'm there again. So, so it's, you, you know, and, and I want to say it's the and both. I am in the world and of the world. Mm -hmm. But they're my world. Right, they're my choosing, not not anyone else influencing me. And I came out of thirty years of a very dense indoctrinated culture. Be influenced, <laughs> right? right? I know influence, and I also in the last three years, I took all of me there. I right. wasn't influenced in the way I was most of my life. It was my choice. I, I was and going I, to ask you about that because you said earlier that you know there was a time where you were worried about like you know appearance or what you may say or what others may think of you and obviously we all have that evolution in our soul that's all oh, Jay, she, she was a stepford wife wearing <laughs> yellow pulitzer i was she was the treasurer was. of the garden club monica was too cocktail, <laughs> cocktail club book club um you know all of the boards that, so, it's so life that, and it was fun <laughs> that's the one thing that i have been gifted with in my life if i could just make that statement is like i have never given an f it did <laughs> not matter. It, it, yeah, you're like, and you're like it yeah. never mattered what somebody could 
could potentially do, say, or think, right? I, like, I, it doesn't matter. And, and really, you really do have to get to that level. And again, it was a gift that I got early. And maybe I did get a little <laughs> bit with my father. But you really do have to, as a being, a present, aware being here now, knowing, you know, connected, as you said, you do really have to get to that point. And if you don't get to that point, that's probably ultimately the greatest struggle is always being, you know, over the shoulder, you know, what, what somebody might think of me, you know? Uh, and Jay, just recently I developed this a little touch of empathy for people. Uh, he did. It, 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 was, <laughs> it was painful. Uh, <laughs> We're both, we're both psychopaths. Okay, the last point, we're not talking about rejuvenation because we've talked about that many times before, but we're talking about psychedelics. Yeah. And by the way, I got to get Angle on the show, but we don't, we'll talk about him right now. We'll talk about you guys. So obviously I am a psychonaut, um, but just a MEO psychonaut. I don't see the purpose of doing ayahuasca. Not to say it wouldn't be amazing, but like I'm, you know, like you, I just want to get to the highest level that I can, the fastest way. Uh, but I'm I'm a big big I wouldn't say believer knower of the value of you know connecting with the earth and the sacred value of that. Um, you know I wrote a really awesome blog on it. I spent some time on it. You know my concern is that a lot of people and I think you guys agree because it was talked about at the show at the, your conference. Um, it's become too commoditized, and there's too many people that are seeking things from the experience that I don't know if ultimately it's ever going to, you know, come to them in the point or the way that they would like it to. And again, I'm not judging them by stating that. I just, I just see it just kind of blown out. But what are your guys' thoughts on psychedelics? I mean, I'll start with you first, Dan. Um, just, you know, I know. Uh, I know it's you guys funny because, them. you know, but, two years ago, yeah. you, I was at a conference and Mike and I were talking on stage and it was Future <laughs> Frontiers Conference. And, you know, they were, they were big on this and they were, they were wanting to talk about us, talk about epigenetics and psychedelics. And, you know, we were on opposing sides of this, you know, I'm like, you know, complimentary psilocybin, ayahuasca, uh, you know, uh, combo. These are toxins and they're, they're designed to keep the, the life form from being consumed, you know, and, and all these are toxins that are altering our brain, a chemical alteration of our brain. Well, that was two years ago. And, um, (laughs) had some experiences in the interim that have opened up more pathways for me to, to understand aspects of this and to contextualize it for people. Because, you know, for me in, in that mindset, they were toxins, but once you start to contextualize it as what it truly is, what it's doing, what it's opening up, it changes the story and it changes the perceptions. And that is, that is a big difference. I mean, you have the people that, you know, they take the MDMA to party, which I can't understand at all. Um, It's, you know, they're, they're using the drugs recreationally and a lot of them are using the, the um, entheogens more as a, a, uh, as a crutch rather than as a tool to to assist in that that consciousness expansion to the point where they almost require them i mean i know entrepreneurs that that will schedule confrontational meetings and require in a contract that that both parties have to take mdma before coming in and i'm like why are you kidding me it's, uh, but no it's, it's interesting it, it, it's actually happening and wow. it's just it makes no sense to me but understanding the the ability to open the brain to to different things i mean we've been using uh some ketamine therapies in our in our clinic and seeing profound right uh, experiences with this in people with past trauma ptsd and even people that have you know minor traumas that they didn't realize or subconscious traumas that are coming out in this and they're able to work through them and suddenly their life changes dramatically so, you know, when we've got, you know, MAPS just came out with their, their early uh, phase three um, MDMA and, um, and therapy, and they're about 60% of the way through the phase three trial, and they're having 
90 percent over 90 percent success so the statistical significance is enormous and they're predicting that once they complete the study that you know it will be irrefutable with the uh with the fda about moving this thing forward you know i my, one comment and then you could have the final say uh micra um you know i i owe a lot of my conscious expansion to using mdma mm-hmm. and i was never really using it like to party either. I mean, and I was always blessed to not have the common garden variety street shit, you know, that people use to party, which God knows is what in it, you know, I mean, I, I have stories I could tell you guys, but anyway, I know that it, 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 it advanced my consciousness. And, you know, one of the things that um, you just said about trauma and transgenerational and transpersonal and all that stuff, you know, that me and, me and Amy really got deep in the podcast that her and I did together talking about that stuff. But I, you know, I've read a lot of books now about that. And I truly do think that that is the greatest hindrance for most people is like, first off, it's recognition that they have this trauma, whether it's from a past life, their current life, you know, birth canal trauma, their parents didn't love them enough, whatever it is, it's the recognition. And then it's the willingness to integrate it. Mm-hmm. And obviously, as you guys know, it's not easy also to find people in quote unquote, you know, this world that you and I are, are all three of us are now, you know, <laughs> attempting to balance um, who can do a really good job of that. I mean, you guys know people, I know people, but it's not garden variety information for people on the street. And I, I do believe that that is the key for pretty much everyone to overcome my, my, my opinion, you guys, you can share whether or not you guys think I'm crazy or not, but I, my opinion is that the majority of, um, you know, um, auto, you know, whatever autoimmune disorders are from unintegrated trauma and the doctors just want to slap a label on them, you know, whatever it is. Oh, I've got, you know, uh, a gluten allergy, or, you know, I can name 50 other things that people come to me and talk to me about. But I think that a lot of it is just trauma that they just have psychogenically never been able to first address, you know, acknowledge and then deal with. Well, and this is the, this is that myth of the root cause right there. Uh, so right. I'll go ahead and let you answer that one. Though. Well, well, you know, everything goes to what is the human system? Right. What are we? Right. And, and when, you, when you know that you're more than what we've been told we are from the minute we birth in here, when you know that you're more than that, you also know that every single thing matters. The veil between the conscious and the subconscious mind in most people, and we go back to that chart, in most people is so thick. Right that the, the opportunity for the energy to work its way up into awareness simply isn't there. Right. I'm not saying that they can't get to it. I'm saying that it's such a sleeping state, it's so thick, <laughs> that until the light of awareness pricks it, and all it takes is a prick, the minute it, it bursts that open, the light simply permeates the system, the awareness expands. And this is where the psychedelics are quite interesting, right? You know, I, I heard one person say that the mushroom kingdom is going to save this planet. And, and what they meant was that through psilocybin, many were going to have awakenings out of the unconscious just see the things that they can't see and the minute our awareness hits it we're good it's just getting the awareness to it and that's great that's what psychedelics assist with when done in a sacred state where there's reverence for the the medicine and and we don't like to call it that because it's an input but from a sacred nature they're they're um exquisite assistance to our growth, um, to you know, our expansion, to the consciousness expansion on the planet. And the, the trauma, you're right when you said that we don't, we don't know or won't admit that we have the trauma. And, right. and that was me, I'm a, I'm a mover and shaker and I can do anything. And yet I had so much unresolved emotional things right sitting under the hood that I wasn't aware of until after I graduated 30 years from the military. And I was able to actually work with them. And I tell you, you know, for me, it's just like with you, 
what I've discovered, the wholeness of my being that I have discovered, that's always been there, I just couldn't, I just couldn't access it, it was so covered up, is so astounding. And it, you know, to me, the, the, uh, the healthcare thing that we talked about earlier is an easy thing for us to cross the planet. This is different. This is gonna take more right? More efforts, more awareness, more, um, you know, these sparks of instant, instantaneous almost awakening from a really well done experience, right? And so, um, I, you know, I, having been one who judged them and would have said, that's illegal, you're not allowed to do that, don't do it, you're going to mess yourself up. I go, thank God I was willing to have the courage to go down the trauma lane, even though I didn't think I had any. I thought, well, I'm, I'm post-military. I got to have something stuck there. It was all stuck from childhood right. and then compounded by the military. Right. I couldn't see any of it. And now it's integrated. That's awesome. Right? And so it took, it took nine months, I have to say. It was, and it wasn't always, right? As you know, it wasn't always joyful. Well, it's, it's making the choice to take the red pill, Jay. Right, exactly. You know, there's people that don't want to take the red pill. Right. They are happy to sit back, take the blue pill, and resume that sleeping state. Which is okay, too. Yeah. The whole planet's not going to do it. So, guys, I want to do another live broadcast with you guys, but we'll bill it. You know, we'll, we'll get a poll a whole week because we can go so much deeper from what I, I want you said. But that, <laughs> that, see, that's the goal, though, of what you did. That's only 1% of people, my opinion, that can actually change their way of thinking, their rigidity, and be flexible to recognize that, hey, I can change and I can become a better human being. How can people work with you guys right now? Um, what's the best way for somebody who wants to work with you guys? Because there's going to be a lot of people that want to work with you guys. What's the best way for them to work with you guys? Well, if, if they want to get the, uh, the videos from the conference, uh, you, can, you can post that up in the... Uh, in the chat it's a, yeah. there's there's a fee for it but i mean it's 12 it's hours of, of pretty amazing content oh, absolutely. i'm gonna blow it up i'm gonna bill it i'm gonna even send an email yeah. about the whole thing and, uh, and if they want to you know if they want to reach out to us um individually they can go to appearoncenter.com and that's our our medical programs and that would put them in touch with us awesome you guys i love you guys both profoundly i am so happy that you came on today i mean i think this thing was amazing um, it's just as normal. I got to run, unfortunately, because there's so <laughs> Tell your, your lovely wife we said hello. And then we love her. I will, for sure. Okay, I love you guys. We'll talk very soon. Um, we will talk very soon. All right? Okay, guys. Take care. Have a great day.